It is 7.01 p.m. This is the April 13th CPC meeting, 2022 CPC meeting. The meeting will be held hybrid uh, due to COVID-19 guidelines. Present on the committee in person are John Wally, Joanne Horshek, excuse me, Sandra Bach, Deb Harak, Beth Thomas, myself, Jeannie Reed, Brian Walker, and uh, present by Zoom is Dave McWilliams. It's also a joint meeting, so we have two persons who have this meeting on April 13th at 7 o'clock with the members of the select board and Mr. Meany, Mr. Moglin are also present for this meeting. Begin the meeting with public comment. Are the, is there a comment? Anyone on Zoom want to participate in public comment? Okay, moving on. We'll start with our agenda for a review of old business. First item on the agenda is the uh, brass rail, finalization and review of the warrant article that was prepared for town meeting. Does anyone have any comment? Did you see there in your packet? You should have gotten the article uh, that was written, article warrant that was written. It's the third page in the articles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this will be um, presented at the town meeting, May 17th. And one thing I would like to add would be that we make sure that um, Jen is notified so that she could be present at the meeting in case there's uh, questions or comments from um, the town. She could um, be the best to speak on that behalf. So we should probably email her or give her a call and we can do that. Okay, uh, moving on, we're going to discuss uh, the town hall roof project. As a committee, is there anyone who would like to discuss any more about the project application? Have you heard anything about this? Them? Yes, Dave, are you there? I am here. Would you like to comment on um, information that you received when you spoke to the coalition? No, I, Jeannie, I was just looking to educate myself being new to the committee. I just wanted to make sure I understood what the role of the committee was and, uh, you know, where I, where they felt this project fell into the, uh, I guess, the purview of the CPA fund. But no, I, I'm fine. I'm ready to vote. Okay. Anyone else? Comment? Wasn't town council supposed to speak to uh, Stewart? No, uh, David Williams was supposed to speak to him. Um, I, I had already provided my opinion uh, as to the, the fact that I believe that this is an allowable project. And I believe Dave wanted to speak to Stewart as to what his thoughts were. And I thought in the minutes it said you were going to check with Stewart. It, if, if the minutes reflected that, that wasn't. What was okay? That's not what I said. I think the discussion was that if, if mm -hmm. Stewart had a much different opinion about this, then we would like to talk to Stewart so they could resolve the issues if there was issues. Okay. Kind that, of that, that, that is true. That's how I took that. Right. So if they didn't talk, then they must have been. I think my yeah. Answer, so I, I, I had a conversation with Stewart. And I passed on the conversations information off to Carl and others based on, you know, the feedback that he gave me. Uh, but truly, my intent of uh, looking to continue the meeting last time was purely to educate myself on the, the, the CPA and the role of the CPC. Okay. 
So you guys have what, I, you know, I gleaned from our conversation with Stuart or my conversation. Do we have that? I sent off an email. Yeah, I sent off an email to Carl. I believe Jeannie was included. I'm sure I have a copy here, but yes, I'm like... Okay. Yes, there is. In our packets, we do have a letter that the Historical Commission did indicate that uh, the um, April 4th, the Historical Commission voted to reaffirm our continued support for the use of community preservation funds to repair the roof of the town hall. We believe it meets our criteria since the town hall building itself falls under historical standards and by repairing the roof to this historical building would help preserve the structure as well. We are hoping that your committee will support and approve the funds needed for this project to help preserve town hall from any further damage. Thank you. Respectfully submitted, South Historical Committee. So, pardon me? I do remember that. Yes, so, so that was presented. I was actually trying to find this. It is in the packet. Yeah. That yes, is, that is. Yeah, that is it. Mm. No, that is not. I was under the impression that when we had that, when we left that meeting that time, that Dave was actually contacting them for his own kind of personal uh, view as to how he was going to, you know, make his decision for voting. Um, I, I didn't think that as a committee, we were waiting for what Dave had said. I'm actually trying to look for that application. I mean, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope the app, it, it wasn't incumbent upon me to come back and educate people on the CPC, right? As to what our role and responsibilities were. You know, again, I was looking to, to educate myself. I provided what I got back as I, as I mentioned to the, uh, town council and the select board at our last meeting, I would provide them with the information that I was provided uh, from Stuart. So, you know, again, I, I feel much more comfortable voting on this than I did last time. I probably would have abstained last time. So right now, like I said, I, I think this has been brought before this board, not just this time, but multiple times. And I think everybody probably has a pretty good idea of what's looking to be done. I, I say we move to vote on it. And is there anything new in there? A lot of it just restates what the um, Department of Revenue guidelines are. Right, which is all familiarized with that. And from a uh, criteria perspective, it, it falls under both the preservation and the reading. I, I'm torn here is even though something falls under historical it doesn't make it automatic that it has to be done that states that in the coalition number one number two it states that if you are uh, um, um, if you are looking to historically preserve something you then go to the Secretary Interior Standards of Historical Preser Preservation. This was set forth from, um, uh, I probably have to look it up because I don't want to misquote myself. But then there is a set of guidelines from the Secretary of Interior Historical Preservation. That's where, that should have been the next step. With that being said, the attempt was, it should have been, or should be made that the roof is 
is done in a in a in a historical manner, meaning that you can't just put a new roof because we need a new roof in order to fall under the guidelines of historical or the co or what the coalition says. So with that being said, I feel that I understand the need for the roof, but what I feel is that there hasn't been an attempt made to make the roof historical in nature, keeping in, in the aspect of the, this building, as far as when this building was built, the, 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 the type of materials, obviously we're not gonna probably get, we can't get the type of materials to, to make the roof. And that's like, we know that, but there was not an attempt in, and, and I feel that in any of the applications that there was an attempt made to restore the roof historically. It's just a roof. That's how it's coming across to me. I'm self being on the committee, but that's how I'm interpreting the applications. And that's where I have an issue. That's where I have kind of, I'm on, you know, I'm on the fence. Yes, it's historical, the building. We know that. But the issue is that when, when we, you, you have to make, take the step further and you have to make it, make the roof historical in nature. Jeannie, I agree with you 100. I mean, here's the way I look at it. I think if the, the town hall needs a new roof, the town hall should get a new roof. Nobody wants a town hall that's leaking water, right? So I'm in agreement with that. I pay my taxes every year, and part of my taxes, you know, I expect to go to facilities and properties that the town manages to make sure that they're under good repair. And right? So I'm in, I'm all for that, right? I don't think these funds should be used for that project. When I put a new roof on my house, uh, it's general maintenance, right? I am not doing a historical preservation of my house when I put a new roof on my house. I mean, it's just not the case. And I'm afraid it's going to open up Pandora's box if we do this next month next year is it going to be the historical boiler within the town hall that needs to be replaced and it's going to come out of the the, the cpa funding isn't a historical building cover the whole thing not the roof that you're saying? Was... that's what i don't get you're saying the roof is not considered it but the building is isn't the roof part of the building the roof what is you're 20... supposed, oh. what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to, if it's a historical building, yes, we we have definitely beat that one up. Yeah. But you are try, you, what you, what your attempt is to be made is that you are supposed to restore the building to its original architectural design. This gentleman who built this building was an architect that built maybe three buildings. He built one here. He built one in in Boston, perhaps, and he definitely built one in Washington D.C. The type of design was not that popular. And then uh, um, the roof was not obviously not that popular. We know we had a flat roof. The part of the problem is, is that even though CPC was not enacted at that time, you took, we took the original roof off and we just, we put a roof up. What needs to be done is that the roof needs to, every attempt needs to be made to make the roof historical in nature back to, to what the original architectural design was. The flat, I get the flat part, you don't do that, but you have got to make that, that's, that's keeping the building historically fit. That's where it comes into play. So horse, histo historically, yes, and you, but you can't, but that's not an automatic that makes it just because a building is historical then, okay, then we're just, we're gonna do this. And that's where, um, the uh, Secretary of Interior Standards come up. I don't know if we can put them on to the screen. I can do that. All right, go to um, Community Preservation Coalition. Can I review again? What was the request? I believe it was for 80,000 or 80,000. Well, that was last year for the design that was done there. Okay. This is this is actually just for the roof portion of the process. It's also a code issue. I mean, there's been CPC money used for this building. The program you're in now. 
right in front windows, and, and those were those were reproductions as best as they could. But the important thing the historical position wanted to preserve was the facade of the buildings and as much of the exterior look of it. The practicality of putting on another flat roof wouldn't have allowed us to deal with code issues with HVAC and things of that nature. So it was the code issues that also drove the issue. So that's why originally the architect would have tried to have put on a you know a same look as the fire station, a metal ribbon, you know, roof with a riblet look. But that didn't happen back then because of the dollars. But that is what's contemplated here under this project. Also the code issue. And again, there is a precedent for using CPC money from historical, um, you know, for other projects, and we have an endorsement from the historical commission. I think we need to give weight to that. What's the amount again? Well, right now, it, the original application was a million, and because we have um, gone through the process of doing the closeout in the last two weeks over at the other building. We're going to be able to revote the fund, the bond proceeds for that project for what's called a light purpose. So that is a, would be another roof. So we're going to be able to um, lower this request by 170,000. So you're looking for $830,000? Yes, that would be the net. Which then requires it to be bonded. So, well, it'd be about 8 30 now. So, it's something different. And the, and the thing is, the, the document that you got at your last meeting with the different projects okay. and accounts and balances under the historical funds that have been approved to date, um, you have $278,804. So, your board took a vote at your last meeting and you just reaffirmed the warrant article, I believe for 28,000 for the brass rail, which is a, you know, it's, it's, it too is a historical building of nature, but this is the most widely used, publicly used historical building. So there's, there is merit to this. And there's also precedent in having students funds. So that, if you were concerned about that bonding amount that uh, Jeannie just talked about, you do have the other dollars that are unencumbered in your current balances of historical category money before the new reservation funding happened at the big town meeting and then those funds come into the you know, committee in the fall. So, you know, you could do something very similar to what you did for the Allen treatment was that was an eight hundred thousand dollar number. You used two hundred thousand from uh, general and reserve, and then you bonded the other six hundred thousand for the gallon treatments. So you could easily take a a similar approach, so that you wouldn't be concerned about you know having a large hit in it here to spread it over time. So that would be the issue if you choose to. Um, you know, support an amount. And of course, this amount is really only half of the overall amount because we have other projects that we have to do, things of that nature. Then we would be able to, we would have to have a separate vote by bond council on that, uh, Ben. For, a separate vote for the bonding? Yeah, for, yeah, for, for borrowers. Yes. Right. Just like we did with the album. Exactly. So, so, album. And within that vote, we would then be repurposing and reauthorizing the building of bond proceeds. So that has to be in any article, whether it's a standalone article for CPC that revotes it. So that, that'll right there with net down in terms of any uh, bonding that would have to be done. And if you did something similar like you did for the Allen treatment, then you would be able to lower that number even more because you could purchase a piece of that for in cash too. So that's why it's you know it's all about leverage, and this would help us also fund the other part of the project. Which is the C, which is, I think it's that's where we are. I have a question, and only because of what you just brought up in this conversation, uh, you said bring it up to code, which that's never been brought up before. 
So you're saying if you replaced it with another asphalt signal roof, it wouldn't be up to code? No, I think I think what he was saying, if we try to restore the roof to, flat, to its original design, we would have code issues in doing that. To put a, a flat roof back on this building, probably not a great idea in New England in the first place. And it probably wasn't a good idea when the place was built. It's a worse idea today. Yeah, and the other idea that we've done is the material being proposed is kind of a more historical look. It's not historical. I'm not going to, I don't want to mislead you, but it's a more historical look and very similar to what we did at the, at the fire station, right? Um, but, you know, Jim Putnam spoke about this when he was on the historical commission and, and also he was, um, he spoke very eloquently several months ago, it was close to a year ago now, when it, the school was closed and there was a discussion about what to do with the old town hall. And he was the leading proponent to knock it down and build a new town hall or somewhere else in town. And then there was a larger, obviously more successful group that decided to preserve the building. And he says, looking back, you know, 25 years on, that was actually the right decision, was to preserve this building, the facade, the look, and what it brings to the town and what, and what the building is being used for. To me, looking at this project, I think that's how, that's how I've been looking at this project from a, we're protecting a, a historical building. There's no, there's no way around looking at the roof itself and saying, is this, a, are we going to put back a historical roof? Are we going to make it? No, we can, we can pay homage to what was there as best we can. But the outer four walls of the building and what the contents of the building and, mm -hmm. and the look of this, the rest of this facility is really what we're trying to do from a historical perspective. And you know, your board's purview, right? We have, we check with bond council and legal council to make sure that we're on firm ground and making a proposal to you that we felt was, if you guys voted to approve it, then everyone's in good standing to do it, right? Now it's this board's decision to decide if the project has merit for, for your own reasons. And, and you know, and that's, that's your charge as the, CP, the CPC. And, administ and administrators of the you know, the money, the tax dollars that are collected and allocated. You know, the historicals weighed in. From their perspective, they find that the project has merit. But that's why all of those projects come back to your board for your consideration of hope. And, and we do appreciate the fact that we've been in front of you a few times, right? But there, there was a genuine, I think, a, originally a genuine disagreement whether the project was even eligible for CPA funding. I don't you may still feel that way, one or, one or more, you may still feel that way. I don't think, given the opinions that we have, that we're inappropriately making an application to CPA. Now you need to decide whether the project, I think, whether the project has merit or not, and, and how do we take it from there. I, mean, um, I have a couple of things I'd like to share with you and, and, and what I think. I think that a year ago, there was a gentleman from the Historical Commission that said, building's not historical, and now we have a letter that says, the polar opposite. Um, I have three different sets of numbers as to what's in the um, historical account, if you will. Um, one of our reports, there's a difference of 6,000. Now you're telling me 278, but if the 28 from Jen goes through, it's 250. So I still have three different figures there. And I guess we need to work on our numbers. Um, I absolutely, had third grade homeroom in that corner of the building. <laughs> These were hallways. This was open to the auditorium. We did, we did like a thing every spring, you know, a, a talent show, um, played basketball in the back. We had a mezzanine up there. And we had a mezzanine up there. And we had a and there was a roof fence up there so you could let the heat out in June. It was kind of cool. But so and, and I realize that in order to preserve this building, we cannot have the roof tumble in. I also realized that a year or so ago, we talked about which sections of the building are historical and which are certainly not because they were built in the early 90s, late 80s. And I read the hundred and something page report that came out last month when this application came back to us. And honestly, I wish that had come out the first go round because I think that the information in that packet 
would have made things a lot easier to begin with. And then we could have had a uh, positive conversation instead of some of the stuff that's going on right now. Um, and, and honestly, I, I'm chastising you guys a little bit because you know that report that came out a month ago was fantastic. The first application was, oh, shall we say a D minus. So, you know, I, I see why we need it. I'm not 100% convinced that the full bill should fall on CPC funds. Um, I do remember hearing that a third of this building is historic, not the whole thing. Um, I also think sometimes that in this town, we do a very poor job of planning for future repairs. And, and now that there's nowhere to go, well, let's go ask aunt and uncle four bucks. I, I have a problem with that. So, and when it becomes an emergency, which it almost is based on the reports that I read last month, I can understand why that happens too. So that's how I feel about it. Um, and I'm ready to vote for whatever you guys are. Anyone else have a comment? Oh. Yep. So what I had pulled up was the standards for which if it's if a building is deemed historical, you then go to the next step. And yes, it's the website or the coalition has a lot of checks and balances in it. So with this being said, these are some of the things that they recommend that you do when you are trying to historically restore, rehabilitate a building or a structure. Um, I think, what? No, I can see. I, I'm, I'm kind of like with Beth and just kind of don't, I, I get it. I understand it's historical. Um, and you can, I mean, you, you start to dissect this, the, these guidelines that they set forth from the state, from DOR, from the, the government, and you could go either way with it. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I... I agree with you in the sense that if you, if you look at the assessment money that you supported last year for the uh, cupola and mm -hmm. slave roof of the mm -hmm. other building, that is absolutely something that would fall under that type of an approach. The issue we have here is we went from a flat roof to a pitched roof to all these other issues relating to code upgrades that had to be put on the deep the pitched roof, which were the HVAC components of the ductwork, and all the other things that weren't in this building from besides some ductwork. And those those issues had to be done because those are code issues, because any renovation of a municipal building over a certain dollar amount trips the ADA threshold and all these other plumbing codes and, and uh, electrical codes. And that, that's why all of that had to be done too. So, so I play devil advocate with that. We do the roof. We have the HVAC. The HVAC, there's even standards for that, where you're supposed to, how you're supposed to do it properly in keeping in mind with historical nature. So we do the roof, then, uh, and, and we still say, oh, it's a historical building, it's a historical building, but then what are we, where are we, where's the HVAC gonna go? Is it just gonna go like out back? Because then, you, so what you're doing is you're kind of piecemealing a historical building at the, you know, at, at the risk of funds that are available or not available at a certain time. Because if we do that, which I get it, but then you're still, you still have a historical building. So are you going to follow historical nature of how you're going to rehab the HVAC for the building, which I know is a must as well. But then in five years, something else is needed and you come back to CPC, which great, but now you have, a, you have a historical building that you did this to historically with a CPC funds, but you, you did the HVAC with funds that were in the town budget, but then, you, so 
that gets a little well, I think we're just gray trying, area I think too. We're just trying to share it. Like a lot of things the committee does when it leverages APRs and says, okay, we're getting so much from this group. We're going to be a part of that. We're getting so much from this group. We're going to be part of that. Generally, the committee's always had a tradition in this in history of leveraging and being part of something instead of the whole amount. With the auditorium project came to us to renovate all of this, put in sound systems. That was from the cultural council. That was a board that was operating theater and other types of issues in the building. And they came to the select board and they said, hey, we want to be able to do this these types of activities in the building. And we fully supported that. And that also went through this process here. But that was never, you know, all the modern techniques we have and all the technology, those things didn't exist in 1928. Right. I mean, you, you see plenty of, and even in downtown Boston, you see plenty of really old buildings with air conditioners hanging out the window. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think we, we have to try to preserve the character of the business of, of the building as best you can. And, and reflect some modern amenity. You, you mentioned you know, the, the vents and the roof to let the heat out. Well, now we have the choice of uh, air conditioning, right? You have to accommodate that. They funded, you know, CPC funded this lift mm -hmm. for ADA compliance. This, when this building was built, every building that was built back in the, in the time that this building was built up until the, into the 80s, until the ADA was passed, there was very little regard placed for handicap accessibility. Now, the pains that we, take to accommodate and make buildings accessible to everyone, I, their very definition are gonna obviously make changes to buildings. And like I said, I think in this particular case with the HVAC, we had a contractor come in here and, and the, the second or third contractor that's been in to look at the HVAC is, one is what does it cost to heat and cool this building given the bones that are here, that are in some of them very historical for that. Right, and then others is how can we, without destroying the look of the building, be more efficient with energy and cost, and still provide you know the level of comfort that people come to expect today. I don't expect us to go and punch out the roof over here and just put you know risers in here to, to vent heat out of this room. But as it turns out, in for example, when this building was made, and when it, even when it was renovated, this room drives the whole building because of the heat load of people in this room, every other room in this building is driven off what's happening in here. So they have to keep it at a certain temperature, makes it an ice box out there or a furnace out there, depending on the season. The, the HVAC design that we're talking about, which is not a CPC project, I don't think will destroy the look of the building, certainly not in the front. There may be some HVAC equipment on the ground, would be much more efficient, we'll be able to control the temperature in this room and the rest of the, the rest of the building better than it's ever been. So, and it is a delicate balancing act, right? Yeah, as far as how you do it. And I, I respect what you're it. saying. You just have to look at it mm -hmm. from, from the perspective of what you're trying to do. And I think the overall is to, you know, the, the move to preserve this building. And if, and if this, you know, we, we broke out the, the HVAC portion Clearly, it's not really eligible under the, the CPA. Can you guys condition it? You know, your decision-making process, or you have the ability to condition certain rules of the road? Absolutely. I don't see how that's not under your purview. But I think, you know, please visit the, 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 the design work that's been ongoing with respect to the roof and what we're trying to do and, and the overall conditions in the building for the public. Any other comments? Uh, it says clearly that replacement materials must match the old. So it should at least look like what the old materials are. And if you're going to use metal, then that's not what it's not metal. It's going to be PVC. It's going to be like the fire station. It's going to look like it's a metal ribbon roof with right. riblets. But that's but not I, what's on here now, right? No, what's on here now is three cash. Yeah. So, yeah. so the metal the metal roof will look more right, like the original building, building, building did than the shingle that they have now. That's that's really the discussion. The building the, the roof that was put on this building on this building was what? Ninety six. I thought it was only part of I thought right, it was only part of the building that was replaced. The, the senior building. center was an addition 
much later, right? But other parts of the roof have been, all the roof has been replaced at one time or another. And it's, it's fairly uniform now in, in the style of what's up there. This roof design that's being proposed, as I understand it, is it's not flat. It's not exact what was there, but it's more like what was there from a look perspective other than it's gonna be thick, uh, pitched. And certainly it's within in your boards or, or delegated to historical to decide Say, do we have the material identified similar to what we're doing at we did at the fire station? But if there's a particular color or something that they want done that's within the palette of stuff that's available, that can be dictated under your under your decision and delegate either by your board or delegated to the historical commission to pick and say, okay, it's got to be this one, right? We have no worse in that race. Yeah, the, the senior center condition, which is a flat roof, that's that's not affected by this project at all. That roof stays the way it is, that HVAC stays the way it is. That's not being touched. The 1954 addition, you know, is also considered historical because of the year in which it was done. And, and the main part the of the building right behind us. Are, um, are what's happening in the scope of this project. Uh, motion that uh, we vote. Okay, John Wiley motions we vote. I'll second it. Okay. Brian Walker seconds of motion to vote. Yes, being the group project. No, we got. Okay. Okay. John Wally, how do you vote? No. Joanne? Yeah. Cassandra, how do you vote? Yes. Deb, no. Beth, how do you vote? Yes. Myself, Jeannie, I vote no. Brian? No. <laughs> Dave McWilliams, how do you vote? Jeannie, I vote no, and I'm going to drop off after the uh, vote. You have a quorum. Thank you. Okay, so we have five no's, three yes. Committee has voted to not accept the approval of the application for the town roof. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you taking your time. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Let me drop down and go. Do you need that? Okay, um, moving on to the agenda, you guys. Um, discussion of other projects the committee would like to investigate. Is there, is there, does anybody have any, has anybody had any discussion with people in town or things that they would like to see? Um, stuff that you heard maybe brought forward to the committee? Yes, I've had a, I had a long discussion with uh, Dave Sutton. Yes. He wants to do uh, several things, several additional things. Mm -hmm. Achi Court, he talked about uh, pickleball courts, he talked about the spray park, we've all talked about before possibility of uh, recycling the water used by the spray park to irrigate the field, but uh, he hasn't come up with a specific proposal. Okay. Now this would be in Wallyfield? Pardon me? Oh, up in Wallyfield. The location of Wallyfield? Yeah, in the park. We talked about the, uh, if you go down to the very end, the little cul-de-sac there, is a large area to the left, which I initially had uh, 
thought would be a nice place for a stage, he thought that was a nice place for pickleball. It's out of the way. Mm -hmm. Pickleball is pretty noisy. What is pickleball? It's like tennis, except you use a hard paddle and a, uh, a harder ball. And it's uh, a much smaller court, very popular with older folks because you don't have to run around a lot. <laughs> It's a, it's a huge sport in Florida. Mm -hmm. Is it a small court? Or? Yeah, it's a small court. I think it's uh, maybe a third the size of the tennis court. Somewhere between a third and a half. We converted a lot of them. They actually, in some of the tennis courts, just on one side of the net, they'll put in a, a portable net. Noisy, though. <laughs> so, I haven't been up to the Rex, you know, the town field. Of, see, is it town field or is that the Rex Center? It's part of the property where the current tennis court is. Or the, That's the, the, the Rex Center owns that. Okay, never mind. Yeah. So, Just wondering if it would have been a good, good location for that as well. It would have, it, it's a good idea. However, I, I, um, they're a non for non for profit, which that, not that saying that that matters, but. We would probably have to approach them and see if they would, you know, if they're considering or interested or even want to take on that task. I don't know. I mean, it's a thought um, because the courts were already there. But I did hear over the weekend that Dave was working on that. So that's, you know, something that he kind of looking at. Probably haven't been here in like 15 years. So we may have already done something with it. Since yeah. But that was a, that was a, a thought too, or that was a discussion before. One of the things also is is uh, there are community. Well, you are encouraged to have a yearly um, public meeting with the town to um, let the town know, uh, you know, what CP, CPC is and what the funds are. And you're also supposed to encourage the town to give the town feedback as to what they would like to see happen in the town. But we also have to keep in mind that the CPC isn't the one who generates the, the, the um, applications or anything like that. But um, it, is, it is fair to say that it is the town's, you know, people do give to the town. And it, we, are, we are one of the towns in the state that maxes out at 3% with our taxes. So um, I do recognize that Diane in the audience did give me a sheet one time. I still have it of ideas. So that would be kind of what you did with me would be for to have a public hearing, maybe in here, maybe at Wally Park, invite the town to come in and have people submit ideas. And then we just kind of keep them and work on them or uh, as things come along, if land comes along, that you know or something like that that's just I just I'm bringing that up because that was going to be something I was going to talk about anyway but that kind of goes in line with discussing um future future um projects so yes sure go right ahead uh-huh Well, if you want, you yes, but you you have to keep in mind that you're gonna own it, and not and that's not to say it <laughs> in a bad way, but if, if you yeah right, you're gonna become the project manager. Yeah, yeah, that's the best way to put it. So if you want to do like Dave wants to do the pickleball courts, um, that would that would probably that would fall under Park and Rec would fill out the application okay, so for I the pick. Correct, correct. Um, can, Diane, can you say your name and your address, please? So, <laughs> so then if um, you had an idea for, you know, um, I don't know, I'm just gonna say like a lemonade stand that was in the center of town. You are going to be the one that's going to have to do the application. Going to have to find, you know, the spot. 
um, what it's going to cost, all the particulars. That's in the, and like Gus said, that makes you become the project manager. But then the money, but then you're asking for the money to do all that. But that's kind of how it would go. And then what happens is if it meets our criteria and we approve it, then it goes before the town and the townspeople say A or nay. Yeah. We, we can say yes all we want, but if the townspeople are like, yeah, no, then it doesn't matter what happens. And then I would find all the Well, you would have, because you would have already um, had all of that as part of your application and meeting with the board and kind of going over, well, did you, you know, did you think about this and you get quotes and how it's going to be done kind of thing. Yes, sir. Got more than five in place. First, pickleball is an excellent idea. Mm -hmm. It is. Agawam can't even get on their course. Westfield can't get on their course. It would be a great addition at all of our or a conversion of the old ass course at the recreation center return one. Or both. I, I, I don't know if they were thinking down at the bottom of all the park of this house or some of the noise because it is very noisy, but it, it's very well, um, it's been very well received wherever it's been, it's been built. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a great sport for, I, I've heard say AP or guys like me that are full of their knees playing racquetball or whatever, you can transition to that sport and, and, and play it. So it's a great idea. Because anything is, I think every year, um, CPC has an informational meeting. You probably just need to get it on right. press or whatever to get people to come out. Yeah. Because I, I mean, it, it's a fantastic program and it's done some amazing things in town. Mm -hmm. um, so, and you know, wherever the ideas come from, and if, I think CPC can also give people great worthwhile projects or ideas with projects. And from where you come from, from your boards or commissions or as elected, can play matchmaker, right? So Diane wants to put said lemonade stand, put her with a group that would be benefited by having a funded project that would then create said lemonade stand, yeah. right? That would take some of the onus off someone who has a good idea from then saying, okay, great, right, here you go. You own it and you have to report to us mm -hmm. to do this and hire the vendors and dig the holes and pour the concrete, right? I think that's, that would be, you know, the pickleball is a great example. Like, if you know, someone sees a need for that, great. Rally support from either other board, park and rec, public that would be interested. I know in Westfield there was a you know a public group that wanted that wanted it, and, you know went after it. They they they've been successful over there. But that's that's one way to break you know and using the uh, cigar pack, right? The historical commission championed that, and then they got the money, and then they project managed it mostly to, yep. to get that thing mostly moved down there. Mm -hmm. I believe the uh, yearly information meeting is uh, required. Yeah, it's under, under, the, under the law. Yeah. Yes. But, it's, and, but it's, it's always a shame in a way, right? Because this board does such great work. And you post it, and you basically have your record this meeting. And maybe, I would say, one to nine people show up for that meeting. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the finance committee, select board of budget hearings are here. That's where all the tough decisions are made for the town for the year. Crickets from anywhere until later in the year when people yeah. said this didn't happen, this didn't happen. Okay, but that was all decided in February. So you guys have that meeting. It's a great way to advertise what you do and, and see projects or, or take in ideas for projects. And then, you know, there is a way to find an avenue to, to champion them and, and see them to fruition. Thank you. Thank you. So what we'll do is, is um, we'll have to figure out a date and we'll have, which should be sooner than later when we have our annual CPC public meeting. I think it should be in September. Yeah, September. Because that's when we start getting applications for the May. Okay. Um, right, which might kind of go in conjunction with a few of the other things that we're gonna quickly go over here. So. We could do that. So we keep September in mind. Public hearing. The public hearing. And
it could be the what jump starts the application process. So let's let's um let's hold on to that for a second so we can finish out what's in the old business with the minutes um for March 16th. Um did everybody look at them? Or they did they make it all the way around? Okay. Did we cover more finding? No, not yet. Did I skip it? Yeah, you, skip it. Um, you guys, I need glasses and I'm trying not to wear them. Um, okay, <laughs> let me go back. Discussion of new info. Okay, more vining. Um, I was going to ask Dave to, to comment on that because he was he's on ConCom, but um, he had to leave. Um, the best way to explain more vining that parcel, it's on hold right now. There's some legal issues with the property. Um, the house. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, uh, the, the seller had already entered into a contract with the buyer and at, we're at a point where there is um, they're, they're, they kind of can't do anything right now. So plans that other folks had to want to purchase that parcel are on hold um, until either the um, the contract can be renegotiated or uh, or changed, and it at this point, from what I what kind of what I understand, it doesn't look so good right now. So should we table this? I think we should. Yeah. So in in my packet is release of right for first refusal under Chapter sixty one A. We already Has did the that. Select board already signed off on this. No, no. Am I correct? I, why do I remember it going back to conservation? Why? Or you do remember it going back to conservation? They were going to recommend to us whether or not it was a valid project. Correct, yeah. but then um, that's where. Can you? Can I? I'm gonna. I can actually give if I can read an email real quick you will know exactly what happened. So I there's a very tight timeline. There is. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna kind of read you some, apparently um, Art Pinnell, apparently his attorney and the developer, developer's attorney have said the purchase and sale agreement puts the land in the hands of the buyer. He can opt out of the 61A after the sale, the buyer but has no interest in, in, in uh, preservation. So he, he doesn't want, he wants the property for other things. The buyer still has time to do, to do due diligence as an unspecified time and can back out if he desires. The property remains as one piece, including house, barn, and farmland. If you recall, we were trying to get that separated. So that's not working out too great right now. Um, so at this point in time, the situation is out of the, the, the um, seller's hands and there could be legal ramifications if he were to try to break the contract. So at this point in time, um, I think things are being reviewed and um, they're looking, they're reviewing the purchase and sales agreement again and it's kind of on hold. So, that's, so we can table it. And I have someone in the audience from a committee, so. Um, the last I heard about this was that the purchase and sale agreement was filed correctly in the first place. So that's what I'm going to do is come back to the stuff. Even specified the term attorney, mm -hmm. that's the latest will happen in the future. So it may be that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we, excuse me, we can table that until we get more information on it. A motion to table it. Thank you. Second. Second. Joanne, second. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, to table it. Okay. 
Uh, Jeannie, about the table. Beth. Table. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, table. Cassandra. Table. Thank you. Joanne. Table. John. Table. Okay, unanimous vote to table. This topic until um, <laughs> more information becomes available. Okay, so now we can go on to the minutes. Um, we have we have we have reviewed them. I did make a change in um, the on the first page with the public comment. I don't know where they're at now, but basically what I changed was just the the wording of what um, the individual who spoke at public comment had requested that. Um, the recordings were not posted on the web, the town website for our meetings, and this individual had requested that they be posted. Um, so I just corrected. The, yes, thank you. They would be posted publicly. So I just corrected what was in the, the meeting notes. And did anyone else see anything else? Um, an issue? Yeah, that's a small thing. Jen Nalesco yes. on page two. Mm -hmm. It's Nalesco, not Valesco. Not oh. with a V, it's with an N. Thank you. Okay, so we'll make that correct. So with those corrections, um, I make a motion that we uh, approve the minutes. I second. Okay, thank you. Um, Brett, yes, please. Approve. Okay, I approve the minutes. Approve. Thank you. Approve the Thank you. Approved. Thank you. Approved. Okay. So the minutes for um, March 16th will be approved with the changes. All right. Moving on. I'm going to put glasses on so I can don't screw it up. Okay. So um, that was a typo. Town meeting is May 17th. Okay. Is there a time yet for that? Um. Yeah, it usually is, but it is not. Yeah, it's not posted on the website yet. What time? On the South Oak website? It's going to be indoor this year. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> that was crazy. Um, okay, so uh, the, the next line item for new business was review more articles that were prepared for the town. What I put in your packet was these were due on April 1st. Um, I, I, being a new member, was under the impression that when we left our last meeting, I only had to submit the um, warrant article for the uh, brass rail that we approved that day. Then I found out I had to go back and I had to do a few more. So I wanted to make everybody aware of what we had to do. We had to submit our budget for um, CPC. Yep. And if you look um, how much we got, you know, we split everything into our reserve, into our funds, um, our open space, historic community housing. That figure, that 66,000 um, figure was uh, what we got. Then the remaining balance goes to our, um, our general on reserve fund. So with the surcharge collection and the state revenue, those were the, the, so the surcharge is what we get from the 3% from the town taxes. State revenue is what they match a total, 660,000. Um, then I sent you guys, I, might, I sent you an email earlier today. I might've sent it yesterday, I'm not sure, but I just got an email the other day that says they're now matching that we're gonna get more, which is good. Um, yep, I got that. So again, being a, being a town with 3%, which is actually great for us, we, we're gonna get a, a bunch more money, which is good. Um, and it, and uh, it's a 35% match because we're in the three percentile of um, the state revenue or the state funds. The only thing I didn't do, but I was seeking assistance from, um, from Carl was I didn't get the mathematical figures. I think will increase with 23, by 23,000, we'll get 23,000 more. What, 683,000? No, what it'll do is, is the way they said to figure it out was to take your, um, 
you take your uh, the amounts that you that you put into each each um, category, and then you times that by thirty, or you do that the thirty five percent of that. So I got twenty three thousand. I could be wrong, but I'm going to get the right um, number. That, for each, that would each be one? for each. Yep. Yeah, each one. Yep. And then, um, and I and I have to um, speak with the DOR consultant. Um, there's three rounds of that, so you get you, you they may they get spread that. Them out, don't they? Yeah. they spread them out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So even the sixty-six thousand, those numbers will probably change. Based they on might. They happened. might yeah. when you go to the it's town. Still, it's going to be sixty-six thousand for twenty-three. Yeah. And, and then they, the twenty-three will be. Then the rest will be spread out. Right, so. mm -hmm. And um, so these numbers on this warrant article might change by the time we get to the town meeting. Yep. And you still want to state the Correct. And that gets reviewed by um, the select the select board and the um, town council. Okay. okay. Have but I just want to, tonight? pardon me. Do we have to approve this tonight? Oh, uh, no, these were already, already done. Yeah, okay. already done. I just wanted you guys to okay. know what was done. Okay. okay? And then um, the five percent was the other one, um, which is which is the yeah. that's our admin fund, okay. So that was the twenty three. That was twenty three thousand. And then the last one is the alum treatment, which we're in, and I and I'm not sure how many payments because I'm newer to the committee, but we're in the third interest and principal payment of the um, six hundred thousand dollar bond for the Allen treatment for the lakes. So I'll be able to, I wanna get more information on that just so that all of us on the committee know how many payments there are. Yeah, I was just gonna ask I'm not sure, but I'll find out. Because that's one of the things that we bonded and you have to be careful with bonding. We can't bond everything because it, because uh, it, yeah, it literally has to do with the credit rating. So you have to be careful. You have to be careful with that. Not saying that we just we don't deny, we deny something because of that, but you have to be selective when, um, you know, when we're picking up these big projects. So I'll find out how many more payments we have. Okay. okay. Um, do you do you know if the payments are quarterly, like taxes? The property taxes are they quartered? No, uh, they... no, because what happens is no, it's it's the once a year, once a year. Because then, yep, because this will go on the warrant article, and then the town has to approve it. Chunk of money gets put into some other funds, and the, the town took pulls it out. Yeah, no, I under I understand that, but so second, you're saying it's third payment, but how does that work? So yeah, so is there this, I yeah, think the third year or is no, this is not the third year. Right, because we approved that money last year. Last year, so, so yeah. that's why I'm thinking it might be quarterly. I think it maybe is quarterly. Maybe we have another yeah, one to find out. I think it is quarterly. And sure. and that being the case, so September would probably be the fourth payment. Because that would be six if we took the six hundred thousand divided by twenty eight, we're looking at twenty four payments quarterly. Which is four years, so it'd be paid off in six years, which sounds about right to me. That does. That sounds about right. I mean, that sounds close. Yeah, yeah. But we'll we'll find this out so that we know, so that we know. I mean, we should. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. So I will get some more information on that for us. Um. The next thing I just put CPC attendance at town meeting. I really just put that because um, I think most of us attend the town meeting anyway. Um, but there could be there could be a time where we may be asked a question and we may be we may have to respond. Just be aware. That's all. Yep. Okay. I'll be okay. Uh, then the the next line items are uh, the CPC application procedure. Um, I, I know this was presented when I first got on the committee um, that we wanted to kind of streamline our application process, make our application process a little more um, user-friendly, maybe on, online, 
And uh, I think we need to start working on that. But I think what we need to start doing first is, is um, we need to we need to step, set some deadlines for when applications can be submitted. So we, we say applications are submitted by November of, you know, so that this year. coming November of this year, we'll put it to, so, so it's been approved, on the warrant for the done, year. warrant, yes, okay. for the following year. Yes. For, for a few reasons. One is because you have a meeting could get canceled. Um, we could have kind of what we had with the roof project where we had to kind of go back and forth. Um, we may want to go see a site. So we only meet once, a, we're meeting once a month. So it's kind of surprising how quickly the time will go by. So if we set those deadlines, then we, you know, you can always make an exception for an emergency application, but keeping that in mind, that allows us as a committee to be prepared. We get the, we get, we get the application. We're able to, to dissect it, to be able to discuss it as a committee ongoing, and then we can let the applicant know. And I also think a good idea, and I'm, I'm getting these ideas after um, reviewing the coalition website and looking at other towns that have submitted their applications or that have um, given examples. And I'm kind of looking at, you know, taken from this one, taken from that one, some really good applications. I think it's important that we have a project eligibility um, application first, like a one page thing that whoever's filling out their application. The one we have now is horrible. Yes, it's, it it's is. definitely not gonna be that one. I have one, the, the, the town of Watertown, of course they're not money, but they did, and I'm not saying that we can't do this because they use their admins funds, but they had a, a study done and then they put together this incredible packet of information and the application and um like it's, an updated it's a, application oh yeah we need yeah. an updated yeah. application number yeah. one number yeah. two we need to um come up with the the um project el eligibility determination form is first and foremost we should have that way as a committee you can review it and say okay this doesn't fit the criteria then you don't have someone filling out an application and having to go through the whole process and it's you know it's a waste of time for the applicant and for the committee. Okay. So we do that and then we have the app. Then after we review it and we say, hey, we think this is a great idea, then we can say, now you can move forward with the application. This is the deadline for the application. Boom, it's been this. So I just think as a committee, we can kind of work on that. I think because uh, <laughs> you go on the website, it says the application deadline was March or April of 20. 21 so it's not up to date so then you can't i mean how can you enforce the deadline application if it's not if up your to date? paperwork if your paperwork is garbage right. yeah so we have to i think that's you know it helps us as a committee and it also gives people guidance as to what they you know what they're going to do what things like that um there there is um you have me on email twice I just don't know which one is yours. I'm not the tanker. I'm the lady McBee. So <laughs> launch tank. That That's tanker. Mr. Husband, Mr. Thomas. Yes. And then he forwards it to me. Did you get this one? I'm like, thanks, honey. I will do that. Thank you. I will do that. <laughs> I just I send them both because I never knew when I told myself to ask you that. So, so uh so for so for deadlines, what 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 do you think we would like to see a, a deadline for as a date wise for possibly first the eligibility um, form? Eligibility, eligibility can be done anytime. Sure. Right. Yep. So but then the deadline for that. Okay. Other so than, you know it's got to be. It's got to like be filled week, out a week before the meeting. Okay. So we can review it. All right. So then so we say the week before the meeting. That year? would be. Well, yeah, I agree. Meeting. That's probably a week before the meeting. So you're talking about deadline of the application. So when they turn the application in, right? You're saying afterwards. Yeah. Right? We have to have it in by November or October or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then anything after that, what happens? No, you don't. You don't take applications, they, or you just. It would have to be for the following year. Okay, so you're talking about the. the or you year. make an exemption for something. 
say land acquisition that has got a 120 day right of refusal or, or something that ha is an emergency, I think, you know, you make exceptions for that. Okay. But um, I mean, and no one's knocking down the door right now to fill right. out applications right. either. But I just think if you if we make it more, if we make it easier for us as a committee to be able to um, have, you know, to be able to have a completed application, one that looks official and is detailed, it helps us in our decisions better. And you and deadlines where um, unfortunately you're not being, you're not having an application thrown at you a month before you have a town meeting, that's that's difficult. It's a lot of pressure on that, you. That was a lot. Yes, excuse you want me. To a, a data? Yeah, I would like to. Did, Yeah, but I think we, unfortunately, I think we um, try to get shied away from special town meetings, not saying that, you know, it can't happen, but I know that um, I mentioned that before and it was like, you want to do what? But, and I know it costs money. No, I just said, I mentioned that another time about if you have something that needs a special town meeting, it's like, oh, well, it costs money and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. No, and you're ab absolutely, and that. No, you're right. Yeah. Well, how about we say the hard deadline is to make the annual meeting, the annual town meeting, to give us time to review everything and present it at the meeting. Okay. So it seems from reviewing applications that November ish is a time that seems to be most towns. Application deadline. Why are you laughing? And just, I'm just thinking about Jen. I mean, she, she probably put hers in there on November. It took that long. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's so the it's not unrealistic. Right. And, then, and, and you kind of, and when you're looking up this stuff, they say that's the reason why, because you either have, if you have a conflict or if you have the committee wants to property or go see it or the application isn't completed. So, you know, you do something maybe in like a November. Um, that gives you time to, to review it and get it prepared. Um, also, you have things come up. You may not have everybody at a meeting one time. You have to table it to another meeting. I'm going to be the bad guy to yell this out. But, uh, okay. All right. So we just talked about the eligibility determination form. Yep. So we need one. We if, do. If we don't put a date on it, we're not going to do it. When do we want to get this done? Um, are you saying and who is going to do it? Well, is that the admin's job, or is that our job? I don't know. Well, I'm kind of putting one together. Oh, what are mm, right, I'll yeah. give you a date. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of took what was brought to the committee a while ago. Okay. And I'm trying to, um, I'm not very computer savvy, but there are things I'd like to have, you know, like filling in the computer on mine instead of it being like hand there. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, <laughs> so how, how does it work? Do you, cool. I, I, I would not agree. So you just make a paper form up and then somehow yeah. it magically gets converted and puts online? Yeah, on, on the South website under CPC. Oh, I saw the forms. Then the deadline would be there, mm -hmm. and information that we want people to know would be there. Um, and I, um, because I had so many other things going on, I had started kind of playing around with one. Um, I mean, I don't want to plagiarize, but Watertown is, is amazing. If they didn't copyright it, go for it. <laughs> <Totally true. laughs> I'm just, I just kind of have been looking at theirs and curtailing it to what I think we need. We definitely need a project eligibility fund. And that project eligibility fund that we have now is horrible. It doesn't really. I saw the way Carl filled out when I was doing it. Was horrible. So, it really isn't into depth and everything else. No. So, what um, 
I don't think I have what I was working on. But what I was going to do was is just play around with some stuff and print it out and have it next meeting and we can so write what, it and who, what part of town it. puts it on the line for us. Um the 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 town IT person and I think his name is Jim, Jim. right? Yeah. Jim? Yeah, Jim. Middle Jim Middleton, I think. I don't know how I don't know if I have to make an appointment with him if we have to make an appointment, but we'll figure all that out. But uh you have it where the application's there, the person fills in the stuff right on the application to print it out. We get it printed. So that's the first one. And then the second one is the, the procedure. Second one would the, the be the second form is the procedure, right? That has to be is that the criteria or the procedure? The procedure of, of how they do it. So step one, uh, fill out the de determination form. Yeah. And then present it. We'll say, yeah, that we're not going to vote it. Yes, sir. well, we could say right off that. No, it's, that does not meet the criteria. Because, because and you don't this. have to do it in front of the um, applicant either. You don't have to do it right then and there. Oh, you don't? No. Okay. You don't. Am I, am I correct me if I'm wrong? Right? Yeah. So okay. we can Is always the say. Determination form the criteria of what they're putting in. So yeah, so we have the eligibility and then we have the actual application. Yes. So the eligibility is Subway comes and says they want to redo their sign under historical funds. We look at them and we go, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, that, that does not fly. And that's it. And then they didn't have to fill out the whole packet. Right. That's what, yeah. And the, the categories for what you're applying for funding should, should you, you check off or you X the box of which category you're going to ask for funding. And then I think it says, you know, like give a brief description of what you want to do. That would be kind of the eligibility. Um, yeah. And then at that point, they give that to us and mm -hmm. we can say, no subway, we're not going to give you a new sign under historical. Correct. So... And then they're done. Correct. Now they may come back to us and say, but our sign has had a clock in it for 19 years and the town depends on getting to work on time. <laughs> well, right. yeah. Right. So then right. you just, so then they would have to probably redo it again. Redo it again. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes those are the kind of conversations we have. But you, you, and you have a good point. <laughs> I'm trying to look up, I uh, was trying to look up the um, the Watertown application, yeah. So uh, almost every one application that I looked at on, on their examples had the project eligibility determination form. And it was just a way to say, yes, we'll accept your application, now you can move forward, or no, it doesn't fit the criteria. So that, I mean, I don't know. Is that wasting time or? I don't think so. What do you think? I, don't think, so. I think it cuts yeah. out a lot of um, wasted time with people filling out this whole packet only to be told no. Right. You don't, you, you know, Subway, no, your sign doesn't fly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so do you think it's fair to say, like Brian said, that um, a week before a meeting is a good deadline for the the form? Yep. Okay. Because that's not the whole review packet. Correct. That's just yep. us looking at it and saying, okay, this has merit or no, it doesn't. So do we all approve that or just someone who does that themselves or one person does that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, enter entertain a motion to have the project el eligibility determination form be required to be submitted one week prior to a CPC meeting. I'll second. Okay, thank you, Doug. Brian, how would you vote? I agree. Okay. Myself, I agree. I agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. I agree. Thank you. Okay, so it's unanimous. So in the first step of our application process will be the eligibility termination form. It will be due one week prior to a CPC schedule. Great. 
Good start. And we we hopefully will get that in our email. So yes, because the intent is are you asking like when the to have it out of line so it goes yeah. yeah. That's the intent. I can read this stuff at my leisure. No, I hear you. <laughs> Yes. That's my intent because um, some of these applications can be directly submitted to the CPC um, email and they can either be forwarded from the admin person um, or, and I think they said, like a few of them said to do that and then you had to bring 10 copies with you when you come to the, like your application, you have to bring 10 copies with you. That's, I read that a lot too, but that's where we haven't got there yet, but. So at least we know we have this stuff. Uh -huh. We yeah. have the option. We could just email it though. Oh yeah, but it's good to have that. We got to we got to get it with this with the times of the technology. And then we can print it out after. Yep. Yeah. But we still have to do it. Yes, and we just get we just make it we get more streamlined and we clean up the application, make it look prettier and um, more uniform. I think. And that gives us time to post the agenda within the lot of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's why they give you a week. So you only have to put three days. Correct. Right. You only need three days. So yeah. yeah. Oh, it's technically two, but the way it falls. Yeah, it depends it's, on time. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. hard. It's three days. Three days is yeah. okay. So um, do we want to determine? A project application deadline today, or do we want to continue to work on that? I would say January first. Like if if the election is in May and they have to get it to us for January first, that allows four months of back and forth without everybody standing on their head. 10 days before the town meeting. Yes. For some reason, we have more questions and it gets delayed just to go to the next year anyway, right? Because it does just in the town meeting. Is that correct? That's why don't you just make it for that end of the year, the December 31st? You know what I mean? Instead of making it to the yeah. following year. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're still in that year, but you're at the end of the year. And you think December is, a, is enough time? Well, how about our December meeting then? If they go December 31st. Well, we'll just think and that would be in our January meeting. We'd be so voting December 31st. On. I like that. Right. Does anybody else? So we would go with a December 31st application deadline. I make a motion to vote for December 31st. Okay. Yes. Great. Hey, yes. Vote. Okay. Jeannie votes yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. All right. So it's established. We have a December 31st application deadline. Okay. Now you're working on the forms. I am. And you're going to bring the I, forms to us and we're going to yeah, vote on them. But I also don't want to exclude anyone who wants to be like, hey, I'd love to see this in there. But what I'm doing is, is trying to just put something together. Then we can, you can dissect it. You can say, I want this in there. Okay. But I thought maybe we could have an outline of it. I just want to make sure it's for the town meeting that you put in that for. Okay. The December 31st is for the town, the annual town meeting, right? To give us time to get it to yeah. the town meeting. To get it to the annual town Yeah. Meeting. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to build a skeleton and then we're going to build the body. Yeah, we're going to, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you can tell me you love something, hate something. Mm -hmm. um, Deb seconded. Okay. I don't know if this gives you enough time, but maybe we want to try for the next meeting to have that outline. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going with that one. <laughs> I can, I already, <laughs> I'm almost done with the um, eligibility form or the beginning of 
it's a little it's like a if little not, blur. If more times me, that's no more that's more. that's no that's okay well, and wait till she tells, tells you our next meeting is until August. She'll have plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? So it was Watertown that you liked? It's yeah. Is there a website for that? Go on the, it's Watertown Mass. Go on the, I was trying to look it up right now. Um, go on to the coalition website and go to, um, give me a second. Adopting CPC. Um, I went to the technical assistance. Give me one second. So. Application. Is it in? Oh. No, it's under something, and they give you examples of towns. Ag <laughs> Agawam has one in there. Um, another small town in like the Berkshires has one in there. Watertown has it. Um, so if um do you think it would be good for us to look at those so that we can talk intelligently with you next time? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why, yeah. Well, why should we start where well, we yeah, can yeah. take stuff out of there and, and um we can mix and match. We wouldn't be talking. We can. We, we can. You can you can. Um I mean they put together this whole, it's incredible, but they had a um a firm come in and did a whole um, thing. They put together this packet, and I'm sure it costs more than what's in our administrative fund. I would imagine, but we could use our administrative fund for that. But I'm sure they have way more, get way more money than us. Um, I can't believe. Oh wait, here it is. Did you find it? So yeah, so you go to the coalition, then go to. Um, it's under, I, it says our most popular articles, and then it's under community preservation plans and applications. So the ones that give you examples of are Watertown, Northbridge, Manchester, Canton, Acton, Gloucester, Lexington, and Clinton. And Agawam, oh. Is that Canton, Connecticut? Or Canton? No, Canton. Okay. Yep, all mass. So then actual applications were Agawam, Belchertown, Concord, um, Hamilton, Lexington, Northampton, and Shootsbury. But look at the water. But those were, so I was kind of just looking at, um, Agawam has a decent one. Just look around and see what you, what you like and what you don't like. And if you want to bring that back, you know, to the next meeting. All right. Speaking of which, would you like this? Yes. <laughs> um, okay, next meeting. So if we're gonna, that would be uh, May 11th, it would be the second Wednesday. No. May 11th. As we see the table. Um, now, was there a, a conflict today? Yeah, I don't know why. Three meetings. What's that? Second. Second week has three meetings. Oh, so should we keep oh, the third? Are we in the third? We did this one early. Oh, okay. we did it early with the intent of okay. Of, then it's the eighteenth of our topic. And it's going right. to okay, so we're going with the eighteenth. I don't want to go the eighteenth because the town meeting is the seventeenth. And uh, and we're all going to be there till midnight. No, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be a whiner, after. but let's go the week after. <laughs> yeah. If you guys are are um, okay with it, yeah. I just have to make sure that I don't take take a room that I think I'm going to use and find out I overstepped can my boundaries. Or no? or I think I can, or I can ask. Oh yeah. At seven, yeah. And then do we definitely need a meeting if there's no new applications? Well, actually, we still have to discuss the uh, formula. So. Well, and we've got to yeah. look at, and it's a perfect opportunity to talk about all these forms without yeah. an application just, just in front of us. Except yeah. that we're going to talk about this, you know, the meeting. Yep, yep. 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 That really. 
Yeah, that's really all we need. Yeah. This quick one. Um, and I'll see if we can figure out how to get these dates that we approved up on our website um, now. So January, um, so, oops, sorry, December 31st of 2022. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we'll do the one week before I go, if I have to write a little something. So, good? We have the motion that too. Oh, we're done. <laughs> okay, I right. motion was in. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I can't believe you were first. All in favor of motioning to adjourn? Aye. 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 Thank you.